Hey guys, what's going on? I am with Haverlock Wool. They are right there, and we are gonna go check out their facilities right now. Guys, this stuff is mind blowing. There's a lot of things in here that I didn't even know. My van is right behind me right here, and I am driving cross country, but I made a quick stop in Reno, which is where Haverlock Wool is, and we're gonna go check out their facilities right now, and I'm telling you, you're gonna wanna watch this one. Right now I'm walking into Josh's office. Hopefully he's not on the phone. I'm here with Josh from Haverlock. Am I saying Haverlock right? Havelock. Crap. We'll respond about it. All right, well, it's Havelock. I just screwed that entire intro up. It's fine. It's Havelock Wool, um, but we, we're here with Josh right now and we're gonna get him on camera. We're gonna ask him. Oh, what's up? This is Boston, guys. This is Josh's pop. Anyways, we're gonna ask Josh some questions, some real hard hitting questions. Are you ready for this? I was born ready. Oh, boom. We're gonna go take a look at your facility here in a minute. Yep. Because I just did a walkthrough with you and it was like phenomenal. Not too dense of a conversation because you and I could go on for hours about this. Sure. All right, so yeah, why wool? We'll just go there. There's a hundred reasons, but the first to start with, I think logically is history. Insulation historically needs to be incredibly cheap so everyone can afford it. Okay. We make cheap insulation. We glue it together typically with formaldehyde or some other organic glue. Yeah. But in the end, the fiber is just not right for what's happening inside of someone's wall. Moisture, vapor, water is what degrades inside your wall, mold, mildew, mm -hmm. and just causes the structure to fail. So fast forward, now we're in a, a world where we have to read our labels for organic food and understand what we're ingesting. And the same is now true for building materials because Unfortunately, we have a race to the bottom of building materials. We want to put as much filler in a material to increase margins, and that's not really the best fiber for the use. So nice. that's building science 101, basically. It is. Use, use the right material for the right space, and it all becomes so simple. That's funny. Earlier, you put organic in quotations. Yeah. Uh, and I just find it funny because, like, anything can be organic that's grown from the earth. Sure. Technically, it's organic. perhaps not very good for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah, everybody that thinks organic is everything is always healthy when it says organic is not true. So your wool insulation is actually from where? Because I found this fascinating. A lot of people didn't believe me, but I want it on record. That so you guys will see later. We have an actual manufacturing process here. We're not just reselling some some farmers' wool. No, it's but, amazing. But we base. Um, our raw material out of New Zealand for many reasons. Look at this cute picture behind me. <laughs> the most hard-hitting reason is that a significant portion of their GDP is the wool industry and so there's a lot of science and infrastructure based around how to properly grow the wool, clip the wool, and clean the wool. And here in the States we have not as many sheep as we had in the 30s and nowhere near the population uh, of sheep that's in New Zealand. But we're able to obtain a raw material that's quality, it's consistent, and allows us to make a professional building product and sell to folks in vans as well as home builders that's consistent. Building material that's not alternative anymore. It, it actually has a reason for, for being in the mainstream. So your sheep, your wool literally comes off of sheep. Yeah, yeah it's, it's clipped. Right there. Uh, yeah. we, we buy our wool. There's all different uh, fibers and, and, and sizes to buy and grades. Uh, Merino is a popular uh, sheep breed uh, because it's a fine hair and mm -hmm. next to your skin doesn't itch as much. We actually go for a Romney breed. Okay. It's a dual purpose. It's bred for meat, so we're also grabbing the, 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 the clippings off it, okay. the wool. Um, but it's coarse. When something's coarse under a microscope, it traps more air. So this has a higher R value. It's better at doing uh, what we intend to do with it, which is insulate. That's good to know. I didn't even know that. Great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. I want to go into, and we'll kind of, we're going to do a shop tour in a minute here, guys, but everybody's going to talk about closed cell foam spray. Again, it's, now we're going more into van life. And we're going to talk about closed cell foam spray, rigid foam board, yeah. pink panther crap. We can go into it all. Like We battle the same stuff in the home building industry, right? Yep. Everyone, that's an insulation you buy at Home Depot. It's readily available. It's cheap. There, Folks, in terms of the van uh, specific community, yeah. there's many reasons folks get into van life. And I don't want to like assume that it's for this or that. Mm -hmm. Our reason, the reason we live here and have a van and travel and enjoy the outdoors is for that, to enjoy the outdoors. So environmental impact is a big deal, but also does something actually perform. When I go skiing, you know, I'm not wearing cotton underneath my ski pants or my parka because it doesn't work. It absorbs moisture and that makes you cold. What's really particular and interesting about wool, there's many things because we're rather biased over here, is that <laughs> it absorbs and releases moisture. Yep. It never just absorbs and just holds it. It absorbs and then as the conditions change, the relative humidity fluctuates or drops 
it then releases that moisture back into the space. And foam doesn't do that. It just doesn't absorb it. So if we can both agree yeah. that moisture is an issue inside of a metal condensating box, you guys call a van, yeah. then where does the moisture go? Into the wheat bowls? I mean, okay, if it can make it down there, but I'm pretty sure we glue that stuff onto the side. So we're basically just trapping moisture behind the wall and thinking that's okay at practice. For people that don't know what the wheat holes are, those are technically the holes that are at the bottom of the van, but a lot of us in, in the van building industry will kind of block those holes off. Yeah, hopefully the excess water gets to that point, but that's yeah. not really, that's like a redundant issue. Hopefully it, it gets there. Where does it get stuck? Where does it get yeah. stuck is the yeah, great so that, question. That's our thing. When you talk about like a two by four, two by six building assembly, you know, normal wood you'd buy at Home Depot, yeah. uh, the same thing. Uh, the wood absorbs the moisture and then that molds. So it has to, the medium for being inside of a wall has to be able to manage moisture. It has to be able to absorb and desorb, absorb and release. If it doesn't, then bad things happen. So this stuff is seen as alternative, but it, you know, wool's like the oldest insulator known to man. Yeah. Uh, so it's considered alternative here in the States because our building practices aren't as advanced as the, as the EU, uh, Germany, uh, mm -hmm. for sure, Canada. Those guys have some higher building practices and it's more accepted there. It seems like the van community is much more open or willing to understand that there's a difference in materials and their space is so small and confined. Choosing the right materials is a big deal. And you have uh, here at um, Havelock, <laughs> Thanks for pronouncing it right. <laughs> Thanks here at Havelock. Here at Havelock, you have two forms of uh, your wool insulation. You have a bat, and you also have a foam, like a spray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. your bat uh, can range inch wise uh, from two to what seven? Or what is it? Yeah. So uh, the bats, uh, we go through the same R value testing as every other manufacturer. You, you buy at Home Depot. Yep. Uh, so the bats uh, are three point six per inch. Okay. 3.6 R per inch. And then I have a loose fill product, which you would actually blow into a wall. You could hand stuff in the cavities in a van. Having done 10 plus vans now, I'm faster at two inch. Yeah. That's just because you can manipulate it easier and it stuffs in faster. You can pull it apart. You can pull it apart. You can literally be naked with it yeah. and like it won't hurt your skin at all. Yeah. It's we don't amazing. use glue. We, we go through this painstaking process to not use any glue in our product. Number one, it's gnarly yeah. uh, for the environment and our environment, yep. uh, and that also means that the material is quite pliable and easy to manipulate, and you can peel it apart easily and quickly and accurately, and you can tear it in little puffs and stuff and go nuts. I can't wait to show your process yeah. of a making a bat, because the bat, you said you don't use any glue, and how it's sewn together is phenomenal. Yeah. Well, every other fiber on the market is brittle, because yeah. it's synthetic, right, except for cotton, but at the same time, it has no real value, so you have to glue it apart so it traps air. That's what insulation is. Right. No one's put a value on what's behind our walls because no one's really paid attention to it yet. And oh, now we're starting man. to get sick and people are more chemically sensitive and we're reading labels and that's where we come from. That's this our is, world. This is it. Yeah. Do you want to go show off the, yeah. your, your awesome, phenomenal... Yeah, you guys want to go for a walk and see what we do Let's here? go for a walk. I'm going to yeah. put the mic on because it's a little noisy in there. I want to make sure we can try and pick up our, our, our talking. All right, here we go. Just a fun fact before we go out there. First of all, Josh is like... Wicked tall, and I'm not. Yeah. Uh, Josh and I are actually from the same part of the country. Right? Freaking A, dude. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah Wicked <laughs> uh, He went to a like a technically a, a high school that was my rival. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're kick, are kick you a little your tail old across all the time. Jeez, man. Come on. Right up. Yeah. Uh, Conquer Kyle. Yeah. Conquer yeah. Kyle. Newton South. We both are very familiar with the Boston area, and yeah. that's. Uh, and we're good at driving. We are good at driving. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go check out the, the the shop, dude. This is where all. All the magic happens. You guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> I walked into this. Oh my god. Alright, I got my wide angle on for everybody. This is insane. Alright man, you're yeah, gonna so have to just walk us through all this. About 75,000 square foot manufacturing facility. We just bought this space about a year ago. It's taken a while to get the machines on the floor running and kind of getting back up to speed so uh, in the meantime you're kind of dealing with a little bit of us uh, figuring out our process though because there's no real rule book on how to make this stuff <laughs> but let's come, go. come check out what we're doing so it's probably best to start at the front of the line in terms of the manufacturing process and that would be with the raw material so let's have a peek at what we're doing here don't get caught in any machinery while you're walking through yes definitely not all right so Concrete. So what we do is we put a 
that metal cage on it to give you an idea of how responsive uh, and elastic this material is. We put a cage on it, we zip it with a cutting wheel, leathers on, face shield on, and this stuff explodes. That's a little bit more of a description of the fiber and what happens to it and why it's such a unique fiber is that it's just very elastic and it bends and, it, and it, it's dynamic. So this machine here essentially takes the raw wool and it starts to pull it apart. It starts to break it up. The name of the game with insulation is to trap air. So we want to pull all these little pieces of compressed wool apart in a consistent form or fashion and then align the fibers for whatever we're making. I've got a loose fill line where I actually spin the fiber into balls and that vacuums into a big hopper. So that can induct onto a fat line uh, where we needle punch and cross lap uh, the bat. If you guys want to see this process, I think it's pretty badass. It's amazing. Yeah, so every batch of wool is a little different, you know, when you start to look at it. So basically, we run through a carding machine. Uh, we just stopped right now, but a big, a thin film comes out onto a cross lapper. And then you start to get the idea of, a raw, of the raw material being turned into a finished product. Super voluptuous uh, lap uh, flake of, of wool. And then I run it through a needle punch. And needle punches, uh, the needles have barbs on them. And we literally cross thread the fiber on itself. Now we don't need glue. No glue at all. No glue. And good that, for me, good for you. Exactly. And that machine, this machine right here, those, those needles all go up and down. Yeah, yep. we're basically sewing the wool together with its own thread. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this, the, the machinery is all 50, 60, 70 years old. Uh, a lot of it was in uh, South North Carolina back in the textile days before it went overseas. So when you see this stuff, you kind of snatch it up for spare parts or to make a second line. This is the stuff that I have that I'm going to be putting in my van right here. Yep. So here's a two inch product coming off the line. Um, I've got rotating cutters. Oh, yeah. There you go. They cut this stuff, and then I've got uh, an electric guillotine, which is kind of you know high tech for us. It cuts it 40, 48 inches uh, length for us. And they just drops right there. Yeah. And, they... and then you know eventually we'll have tables, and this will be more of an automated process, but we're still setting up uh, from our move uh, about a year ago. Amazing. Yeah, and then all of our all of our scrap goes back into the front. So take a look at our dumpster outside. You can see that we don't have a very large impact. We're not throwing a bunch of stuff away. All the wool gets recycled back into the front, and we make a product out of it. That's awesome. Uh, and then the name of the game for insulation is storing. The stuff is voluminous and it's light, uh, and it takes up space. So we got a, a lot of storage, and we build up inventory. Uh, and the next room is where we store it, and you kind of get a sense for the scale of what we're doing. A lot of folks think that we uh, just flip wool from, from somewhere. There's a manufacturing process associated with it. Yeah, I want to show them that spray stuff. Oh, yeah. If we can. This is a little more for our home building yeah, or so commercial building. The van life scene is awesome. Like I said, we uh, involved in it. We have our own van. We moved here for a lot of reasons, and the outdoors is certainly a large one. Uh, we make a product called Loose Fill, and so we roll it into balls. The, this product works in a van. I, I still think that the two-inch product works faster and better, yeah. uh, but it doesn't really matter to me uh, what you use. But this stuff is typically used in a, a home or a residential application where we, it's called a bib, a blown-in blanket. Nice. And we take a bunch of this stuff, we put a bunch of compressed air behind it, and we put it into a wall cavity or a ceiling, uh, and that gets us a slightly higher R value, and it's faster if you're building a huge home. You even have kind of a sample. Yeah. For all the contractors to come and take a look at. There's your yeah, machine so that will blow would, that would blow it, right? Yeah, the, a little dirty. Hoses. We've got a, a few different hoses, a few different kinds of machines. Uh, the general principle is there's a density behind the R value calculation. Uh, the R value is done through ASTM testing. We know a lot about that. What's kind of frustrating to us is that um, the R value test is done at 75 degrees with zero humidity. That doesn't really exist, uh, certainly in a van, uh, or really much in this country. The big companies game this system by developing a product that just passes that test, but in the real world where moisture, humidity, vapor, water are all uh, factors, the R value plummets. And what's really interesting to us is that wool keeps a very high R value in the presence of moisture. That's why we wear it skiing. That's why hunters wear it hunting, to stay warm. It actually keeps you warm when it's wet. So this process for us is basically you have several different kinds of retainer mesh. 
This is a very uh, simple mesh, and it ranges from simple to sophisticated uh, in terms of vapor open airtight membranes that allow vapor to go through because vapor drive is inherent, people, everybody, but allows air to stay behind, which is great for efficiencies. In a van, it might not have as much application as for a, a conventional building. But basically, yeah, you're, you're poking holes and you're filling this up uh, to the, the right density and, um, and, you, and you're continuing on. This other stuff is basically Gore-Tex for your home. It allows vapor to pass through, but keeps air behind. Kind of high tech in terms of building science. Crazy, so you technically don't even need a vapor barrier in a van. Oh gosh, yeah, so vapor barriers really are around because historically insulation fibers are made to be cheap and they don't manage moisture. They love to absorb it or they just shun it. A vapor barrier is designed to keep vapor away from those materials because they don't react well with it. Right. So when we start using the right material for the right space, wool, you don't need a vapor barrier. We don't, we don't, we're not scared that it's gonna come in contact with moisture. Actually, that's why this fiber has been produced or developed over millennia to manage moisture is because it's gonna come in contact with it. Uh, under a microscope, the wool fiber is shaped um, like a spiral, and there are, when you start looking at the different elements that make up a fiber, uh, a wool fiber, there's two particular pieces of the core that absorb and desorb water at different rates, and what that means is the fiber actually moves and bends, so it's kind of foreign concept for a lot of folks, including myself, resist settling by getting bigger, by moving, by creating energy. It creates heat when it absorbs water and desorbs. Yeah, so vapor barriers are really there for uh, materials that absorb, like cotton, like fiber, glass. I know stone wool doesn't uh, absorb water, but at the same time, where does the water go? Um, same with foam. If, uh, if, if foam is going to do a good job of keeping the dew point on the outside, um, that thickness needs to change for your for the weather, you your, your climate zone. And that's really tough to do in a van when you're traveling around. You guys have like a motto, like, where's the water go? Yeah. <laughs> what's in your walls? What's in your walls? Yeah, what's in your walls? <laughs> yeah, so then here's the factory. Uh, you know, we got almost seven it's, acres here. By the way, it is lunch break, guys, yeah. just in case you guys are thinking that people are lazy around there. No, they're, they're on lunch, guys. Yeah. Come on. So right now, uh, Josh is actually showing us how they ship the material because this is actually what I have sitting in my van right now. Yeah, so here's basically our signature uh, van life product. It's R7. This is a double bag, so there's actually two singles vacuumed inside of here. The coverage in this entire bag of, is about 250 square feet, uh, and the thickness is two inch, and like I said, it's R7. Uh, this stuff is ex enormous, so we have to compress it to make it ship at a decent rate. I know shipping is kind of a challenge. What um, does that two bag look like? You're gonna, you'll, I'll show you that on yeah, the wall. Yeah, I'll, I'll show want, you what this yeah. looks like uh, before it gets vacuumed. Before it gets vacuumed, Yeah, right. it's hard to fit them anywhere. They're, they're so large. <laughs> yeah, so we go through kind of an elaborate vacuum system. Uh, That's your vacuum? Yeah. That allows us to, to suck it up quickly. And we were using, uh, you know, shop vacs and, uh, you know, vacs made for your house and the walls and we kept burning up motors and we finally had to suck it up and, and step it up to the big boy. The big boy. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a, that's, yeah, a, that's it, a big vacuum, dude. It's pretty fun. I asked you this off camera. I said, how often do you cook the sheep? So. Yeah, ab about twice a year. Some breeds grow faster than others. The Romney is uh, yeah, about every five months. These guys got to be Yeah, and, and again, Gals. you guys get that stuff from New Zealand. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and New Zealand has just uh, got a very high infrastructure uh, for the processing of wool, all the markets, all the science and technology behind it. Um, we love the fact that the sheep, uh, you know, in the pasture lands and uh, have a great life there, you know, devoid of pesticides, devoid of... Have you been? No, I have not. Oh, let's yeah. go, man. The company trip's happening. Let's yeah, go. But Andrew, the founder, has been there a lot. That's kind of where the idea for this came from after a little bit of uh, understanding of their raw materials they use and the building industry and how poor it's been lately uh, with the, the amount of uh, formaldehyde and glue we kind of pump into our stuff and expect that to be healthy. It's just, it's coming around on us right now. So let's show you guys a little more. Yeah. This is a bag of R7. Uh, each 
single bag is 125 square feet, so typically I take two of these and I suck them into that big one you just saw. That's what I have in my van right now? Yeah, two of those you bags? Got, you got two of those. So when you open that thing... It's going to expand like be, crazy. Be prepared. It's going to get big. <laughs> yeah. You best start stuffing. Like I said, Josh is uh, a little bit bigger than me. Slightly. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna try and get up here, dude. This thing has been this has been a phenomenal day with you. Yeah, I, appreciate uh, you coming I, by and checking it out. Man, I have learned so much. I already knew I was gonna go with wool in my van. I hope other van lifers also use wool, but more importantly, I hope people use wool in a residential. Uh, commercial base. People that are out there, I want to get into shipping container building eventually. Yep. Yep. Uh, shipping containers, this must be like a huge market for Yeah, that. yeah. I mean, again, the, the, the premise for building has been around the cheapest materials possible to increase margins. So now we're kind of figuring out that there's actually a market for a healthy build. People are actually concerned with the air quality inside of what they build. Yeah. Um, anyone mixing two 55 gallon drums together and creating foam, uh, that's not healthy. There's nothing healthy about it. It's it can't, chemicals. that cannot be yeah, good for yeah. you. It can't be. But I am good. This is going to be a completely separate video for everybody. I'm going to be doing another video on my build installation. We're again going to go over wool and we're going to again, I'm going to go over on how I put it in my van because I'm still learning how to use this stuff myself, but I'm so happy I got to stop here. Yeah. And I got up. to learn a little bit on how to actually install it it's in my van. It's an education process. It's kind of not a natural learn. thing. It's not sold to the big box stores. Uh, so you have to search a little bit harder for it. We're working on that. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I think once I can present some facts and some information to you, it's hard to deny that it's right. a superior product. This guy's amazing. Yeah. Contact him at? Yeah, Josh at Havelock Wool. You can get on the website, havelockwool.com. We got a whole van life e-com site set up for you guys. Yeah. Um, and we're just super happy to talk, have people stop by. Uh, we don't make our millions of dollars off of uh, the van life. It's mostly a passion for us. Yep. We want to provide a material for folks who really need it. But what keeps the lights on is selling residential and commercial. So uh, all you residential builders out yeah, there, commercial wise builders, up, please. people, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Havelockwool.com, Josh at Havelockwool. He's a uh, director of sales and other stuff here. He's got, it's like a yeah. two-man wrecking crew here. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Also on Instagram, Havelockwool. Yep, Havelock yeah. underscore. Wool. Okay, have yep. underscore wool. Thank you yep. for that. And we're going to check you out, man. Yeah, come visit us. If you're coming through Reno, swing by the factory. We got a, a See, they, thing to show I you. I hit them up and I was like, hey, can I stop by? Is it cool? It. And yeah. he didn't even bat an eye. He was just like, yes, dude, come on by. We're going to drink some beers. Yeah, it, it's almost <laughs> all day long. It, it's pretty fun. I was like, yeah. I'd love to just hang out with these guys. I got to get back to freaking Boston yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> freaking it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry all right, for guys. talking so fast, you guys. Drink some coffee or keep up with the pace. But uh, No, they're used, yeah, to, they're yeah, used to this. Yeah. Don't worry. It's me. They're used to this. I love it. Yeah. All right, guys. See you later.